Hello, I'm Daniel, and I'll be speaking here with Ankit today about the benefits of radiation shielding bacteria in the space exploration field, specifically the Deinococcus bacteria and the Cladosporium spherospermum fungus. Here is our abstract. It discusses how the two organisms are being researched, how they can be used right now, and how they can be used in the future. Space exploration has created a large impact on society, from sending astronauts aboard rockets to space and rovers being sent to Mars to study possible clues for life. However, one of the major issues concerning space exploration is radiation. Radiation creates many risks during space travel, but there are some methods to mitigate the danger. One such method is the utilization of radiation-consuming organisms, such as the Deinococcus bacteria and Cladosporium spherospermum fungi. Luckily, both the fungus and the bacteria mentioned above show promise in finding a method to mitigate the risk of radiation and find a solution. The fungi can do this because it's adapted to its radiation-filled habitat in Chernobyl, but the bacteria's natural habitat is currently unknown. Both mentioned organisms should be studied more because the organism can help protect equipment sent up to space and astronauts. These microscopic organisms are already being studied on the ISS, but at a slow rate. Therefore, research should be sped up. This is because if a solution is found to this problem sooner, there will be fewer risks in going to space. It can help increase the safety of spaceflight enough that it will be possible to commercialize this into an industry, such as mining, research, or more. These microorganisms can help make space travel and exploration safer, but they are not studied enough to warrant their use. There are four different types of radiation that exist, which include alpha, beta, gamma, and X radiation, with the strongest being gamma rays. Earth has a magnetic field, which protects its life from radiation in space. But space radiation is made of high energy protons, heavy ions, and galactic cosmic rays. And because of this, it is the main threat for space programs like NASA, sending astronauts to outer space, as there's an increased lifetime risk of, de of developing cancer and degenerative diseases. These illnesses negatively affect the tissue located in the human body. It affects their position, function, and structure. Some examples of these diseases are arthritis, which is only worsened and not caused by radiation, osteoporosis, and osteoarthritis, and many more. Scientists are currently trying to find a link between radiation and dementia in chemotherapy patients. For cancer, chemotherapy is utilized to destroy the growing cancer cells. Many cancer patients Recovering from chemotherapy, display memory loss. Radiation imposes many limitations on space exploration. For one, it prevents longer space missions. It limits radiation-sensitive payloads, which could possibly carry very important and very beneficial science experiments. And it causes permanent health problems to astronauts over exposure time. If successfully addressed, the benefits are removing a major barrier to space exploration, enabling humans to send manned missions to faraway planets like Mars, and allowing more complex and delicate satellite payloads for, or other space experiments. Deinococcus is a radiation-consuming bacteria and is one of the most radiation-resistant organisms known. The exact amount of shields from radiation has not yet been found as experimented results have not been consistent but has been proven to have some effect. It may be used to prevent radiation damage in the future. It has already been the subject of many ground tests as well as research on the ISS, but this research is being conducted at a slow rate. It has promised in becoming a potent radiation mitigation tool in space. Deinococcus may prove extremely useful in the future space missions. Unfortunately, it can only survive three years in space. If a workaround for this is successful, it can be used in space missions allowing for a longer duration. Cladosporium spherospermum fungi have been proven to be effective in mitigating radiation from research conducted on the ISS. A code 0.6 inches thick decreased radiation by 2%, proving that it can be a potent tool. It still needs to be researched before its use can be considered as many important traits about the fungi, such as its lifespan in space, have yet to be discovered, but it shows promise in helping mitigate radiation intake for astronauts and space equipment and should be researched more. The fungi has the power to consume gamma radiation that is ionized using the help of melanin, a natural pigment found in human skin. 
The fungi can also help with creating biomass during radiosynthesis. In the December of 2018, researchers decided to put a petri dish with the fungi on the ISS for a total of 30 days and tested its strength and ability to be able to block radiation. There was a radiation detector right underneath the petri dish. It was estimated that a 21 centimeter thick of this radiation consuming fungi would be sufficient to protect astronauts from deadly radiation in space. This fungus was also considered for the Mars mission. The issue with this is that the temperatures on Mars are too cold for the fungi to survive. However, it can still be used within the walls of buildings or stations that are isolated and need protection. The fungi could also be used or incorporated in many materials, like the fabric of spacesuits, by taking out or extracting melanin that the Cladosporium ferrosperum utilizes to convert gamma radiation to chemical energy. Protective shields can be created and grown and can be both self-healing and self-replicating. This shield could possibly weigh only a few grams and is more effective than current methods. Both microorganisms show promise in radiation mitigation, although there are some obstacles for their use in the field. The Cladosporium spherospirum fungi have produced results already and show that it can be used to mitigate radiation. The most prominent issue on the surface is the fact that the fungi only grow in Chernobyl. Fortunately, the research pro proved that more fungi can be grown in space. Another issue with this fungi is its lifespan in space. This has not yet been researched, meaning that it will be years before this fungi can be used in some space missions. But if this and other unknown aspects of this are studied, it can be proved as a powerful tool in the field. The Diacoccus bacterium is being studied and has been proved to be promising, but there are several limiting factors preventing its use in space until solutions are found. The most prominent is its short lifespan. The bacteria can only survive three years in space, meaning a workaround for this would have to be found. In addition, the amount that it helps has yet to be fully studied. So until this research is completed, using this bacteria in the field is out of the question. In the future, when it is further researched, it may prove a potent re radiation mitigation tool for future space missions. But currently not enough is known about it to warrant its use. Before the fungi and bacteria can be used for space missions, Testing and development must occur multiple times in order to determine the effectiveness of both the Danococcus bacteria as well as the Cladosporium spherospermum fungi. Due to this, a conventional satellite being used every time would not be practical. While testing on the ISS is promising, small satellites, specifically CubeSats, would be a better fit for testing. CubeSats are a type of small satellite measured in units of 10 cubic centimeters. They were originally created at Stanford University and California Polytechnic University for education and space exploration. CubeSats are cheaper, more cost efficient, and have shorter development times. This will allow for more methods to be tested faster than with conventional satellites. After testing on the small satellites, testing can then be completed on the, on the astronauts once it is deemed successful. Testing can be done with an experiment in space. One astronaut would have just one, the other would have just the other, one will have a mixture and one will serve as a control. Research suggests that 78 astronauts are enough to determine the accuracy of the test results. Radiation is an extremely important issue in all kinds of space exploration missions, and it can, it can cause significant damage to human tissue and organs and to equipment sent to space that is not properly shielded. Mitigating this problem will enable longer space missions that were previously not possible, there are two microorganisms, a bacterium and fungi, that show promise in helping with these issues. Both Diacoccus and Cladosporium spherospirum have potential in becoming helpful assets in space missions, as they have proven to be shielded from radiation, but until they are better studied, they should not be used in the field. Many important aspects of these organisms have yet to be researched and could greatly affect the course of space missions. More research should be conducted on them as, the, as their use can be the key to long-term space missions in the future. As they are studied in the future more, it is likely that they will have their use in space exploration missions such as satellites with delicate systems or manned missions. These microorganisms will likely affect fu future space exploration missions and will be a helpful asset. Research should be sped up because of their current potential to solve a persisting issue with space travel. Decaucus and Cladosperum spherospermum will greatly affect the radiation mitigation field and will be a potent tool for further missions. Thank you.